pledge of allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. On our agenda, we do have a couple of proposed closed meetings later, along with a public hearing at 6.30. So we'll take old business A after that public hearing. But otherwise, I think everything else is quick enough. We'll just take it in order. Um, we do have some guests here, but I think we'll be able to get to the guests without wasting too long. Otherwise, I'd move it around. Right. Council activity reports. I don't have any committee meetings to report on. Last week I did attend a federal and state grant funding uh, sort of seminar hosted by our legislative team, Lisa Damoth and Jeff Howe in Cold Spring. Found that to be very informative, got some good grant information. There were representatives there from MnDOT, USDA, of course the legislators. Jody Tyke was there from the county, some deed folks. A lot of good stuff that came out of that. So things that we can use for the fire department, um, information I think to share with the township on bridge opportunities and grant funding there so lots of things that we can do um, there was also I had a meeting with both leader Damoth and Senator Howe afterwards talking to them about the proposed bonding bill for the fire hall funding at that point they had not received any proposed legislation from the state legislator revisors office that should be coming through hopefully within the next few days Although last year they had something like 13,000 bills proposed, so the revisor's office is still a little bit uh, recovering, and they're trying to get caught up on what they have this year. So we should have that. That bill should be introduced in the next few weeks, and then we can start lobbying for that grant or that uh, bonding monies as well. Hopefully it gets passed. But otherwise, that's all I have for activity. Neil. Uh, the 29th, we had a special console meeting about the 27 downtown development a committee was formed that will be meeting to try to come up with ideas also <coughs> talked about the downtown storm sewer expansion tonight I had public works uh, went over a bunch of activities uh, reconstructing the lake Avenue Bridge River Bank that's uh, slipping away in the road along with it. Uh, safe routes to school. It's quite a big issue that we're going to pursue funding. 24 seal coat projects and finally we have a truck available for public works uh, for what they call Bob's truck for the year. <coughs> This is going on the third year of trying to find a truck, so. Did they just say, did they find That's, that's good water. news. Huh? Still no truck. <coughs> did you say we have a truck or we're still waiting? We found one that's available. A miracle. They're going to be next council. Sounds good. Good deal. Or do we need to put it on tonight and lock it down before it's gone? <coughs> Anything else now? No, that was Gene. I too was at the working session on the downtown and um, the chamber board meeting was the last thing I Paul. Just a working session. And then just so everyone knows, uh, Tark did inform me Megan's just feeling under the weather tonight. So she's going to keep her germs to herself. Going on to some department head reports, Ron. All right, thank you. First of all, um, the ice rink, sorry to say, due to the weather, that uh, is closed currently. We did have it open for two to three weeks. And that is the same with the sledding now. We do have the agreement with uh, Corona Sales yet, but obviously due to weather, it has not been open. Um, we would like to note uh, on the trail, the name of the connector, the Glacier Lakes Trail, we would like to make sure that is now named as Phase 9 Glacier Lakes Connection phase one and two. There was some confusion with the phase one and two. Um, originally phase one was out on Old Lake Road and phase two was on the west end. Um, so we just want to make make it clear that's it's the phase nine Glacier Lakes connection. Right. Thank you. That is in our informational but I appreciate you clarifying that for us Ron. Okay and at the park board um, the Amphi Park Shelter 
the board did uh, make some recommendations on there and that will be coming uh, to the board shortly for authorization to bid. Um, and the other big item we did look at, again, here is the Coronas Hills Woodland County Park, which we do have a number of residents here to address that. Um, two different grants that we still have open, um, well number eight, the standby power unit, we did get notice today, that is going to be delivered in early April. So, and also again, the well ceiling, if any local resident does have any uh, unused or abandoned well in town, or anything that's within our glisma, we do have funds to seal those. So, and uh, working on the water festival, that is scheduled for May the 17th. Thank you. Right, thank you. Any questions for Ron? All right, Paul. Thank you. Uh, not a ton to, <coughs> excuse me, um, report on. Um, Officer Davis did complete his uh, DM training, DMT training last month. So not all officers in the full-time officers in the PD are DMT certified. Um, we got notice here on Friday. Uh, the post board will be down late March uh, to do our every five-year uh, compliance check to make sure that we're in compliance with training and uh, all other state laws and rules. And currently working with uh, Kristen and the department to revamp uh, the police department's website so it looks a little bit more professional and provides maybe a little bit more um, information for residents. Great. I know one of the things that Gene and I have sort of chatted about just in passing is maybe taking a fresh look at the city's website again now that it's been a few years on the new setup. So I don't know how far you are into that project, but if you wanted to wait until our next working session, it was probably going to be queued up for a discussion there. We've got some stuff and some ideas. Um, down on paper, we've got a department meeting tomorrow. Uh, so we'll be going through what I put together with the guys and you know, as far as content and that sort of stuff. So that'll give me a better opportunity to have something when Perfect. meet when we meet. Any questions for Paul? <clears throat> All right, Dark. All right, in addition to the working session, um, we also had a liquor store uh, interview for a candidate, which uh, we recommended hiring. Uh, we had a safety board meeting and uh, uh, we also went to Howard Lake and we toured the library over there. So that was a really good tour and we got to learn from them on how they put all their financing together, which I think will be a great help for us here. Uh, and then Megan and I participated in a DEED child care grant program. This is the grant program that we applied for about a year and a half ago uh, and didn't get it. It was for the former shop colon, but uh, the grant this year uh, has almost tripled in size and they are looking for ready projects to start funding. We don't have any here in town, but um, I was in touch with one of the township supervisors who said that there is a project in the township that might want to utilize this. So I gave them the details on this grant and hopefully they can be successful at getting it for a childcare in the township. Uh, but going forward, we'll be able to use this on an annual basis, I hope. Uh, and then lastly, we had a park and tree uh, board meeting. It was the first one of the year, it went well. We had discussed uh, several things. Um, especially the Ampi Park Shelter, uh, which of course Chuck had the designs for us. A couple of tweaks uh, that uh, we recommended and then it should be finalized. Any questions for Tark? Great. One of the things you mentioned, Tark, is uh, that child care webinar and I wasn't able to attend because honestly it got put down at the wrong time on my calendar and I went out for lunch instead. But during that lunch I was able to meet the uh, manager and the regional manager for the new tractor supply company they were doing hire or interviews that day. So they're excited to get going. Um, they've got everything on track to open at the end of March and they're looking for a positive season. Good. That was good. Right, nothing else then. We have our open forum period. If there's anybody here for the open forum, I'm seeing a rush to the podium, so we'll cut everyone off and move on. Right, we have the adoption of our consent agenda includes the minutes on page one. The vouchers on page two totaling $688,630.27. A little bit larger because it's a three week run instead of a two. The motion to appoint Chris Price to the safety board from the fire department to have him serve as the liaison. I will say from that safety board meeting, Chris has been a wonderful asset bringing in a lot of things that we might not have thought about. Um, along with the gambling application and an employee resignation. 
go. Unless there's anything that somebody wants pulled from the consent agenda, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Motion by Hertzberg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Soini. All those in favor of adopting the consent agenda came by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. All right, we're going to skip over old business A, go on to the hotel market study on B, Tark. Uh, yeah, uh, this came back to us here. We, we had originally um, put it in front of EDAP and they discussed it. They were hoping that there will be any kind of grants available to help pay for the cost of the study. Um, I looked into it along with um, the um, Holly, who represents the uh, Small De Business Development Center. And uh, yeah, we, we did not find any grants available that will help pay for the study. So when we brought it back to EDAP, uh, they uh, decided to hold off on doing it for now. So that was just the update on that one. You know, when we talked about this as a council, the thought was, we don't know that our market can support a new hotel, but no. we also don't know that it can't. And the study would be to give us some information to help us bring someone in if it can't, or potentially even help those who are already here, right? The purpose of the study was uh, to see if there is demand for another hotel. So it could be a yes or no. If it's a no, then there's nothing else to do. If it's a yes, then we have options to see um, if we would want to do anything to attract another provider or have the existing provider uh, expand or do another one. So that was the purpose. I was opposed to doing the housing study a couple of years ago because I thought it told us nothing that we didn't already know, but then that proved helpful in getting developers here and that apartment building and the senior living stuff up. So I think this makes sense for us to do. If there's a market there, we can use it to attract developers. If there's not, we can use the information there and to help those who are here. Either way, I think we all benefit from it. There, there is a, a, a sentence in your notes here, Tarek, that the company uh, Podtech would limit the cost to forty-five hundred dollars if they find that the market will not support another hotel. Yeah, that was the um, the consultant that I preferred because they did limit yeah. the cost if they realize that there's no demand. So, do you think it'd be wise to go ahead and move with just that that price because it, it's at least half of what a, a full report would have been? Well, my rec my recommendation to EDAP was we proceed with that one, but of course, um, you know, they decided against it. They decided they didn't want to do it at all. <coughs> That's why I said we should bring it right to council. For us to decide. The company that you wanted was the Patek, right? Patek, yeah, out of uh, Wisconsin. Well, I think that would give us a firmer answer. Instead of um, looking at any assumptions that are brought along the way, at least we'll get something in writing. And that way, you, it would probably give us a lot clearer answer instead of trying to guess at it. When we're uh, trying to attract a housing developer, the first thing they ask for is a housing study. Right. So, I mean, like, like Sean says, I didn't really see the value of a housing study until you go out and talk to developers, and that's the first thing they ask for. Right. I think there have been comments about restaurants can't host as many events because there isn't a place for people to stay. Right. Out of logic. I, I'm in favor of it. I don't care if the funds come out of EDAP or if we tap into our reserves. I think the benefit of getting somebody in here would be beneficial. But If you look at the town this past weekend with a hockey tournament, mm -hmm. it was absolutely no place to go anywhere. Right. And you know that a lot of the, um, I mean, we're, this is just one isolated weekend that was here uh, but if there was another mot motel involved you know that would have been filled up so i would say let's go ahead to, at least with the study to find out if we can get a, a more um affirmative response sounds to me like, yeah, i was gonna sounds say like sounds, a sounds like a motion sounds good to me where do you want the money to come from uh edap so i have a motion by Thielen to move forward with the study from Potec with funds to come from EDAP. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Soini. Thank you. The motion is to move forward with the hotel study, taking the funds from EDAP. Is there any further discussion on that? 
a part of me thinks maybe a year or two off might make more sense. I think the chamber with our sales tax money, if we could get promoted as a tourist, it's a stop and what we're going to be discussing a little further tonight here, if that proceeds, I think we could become a strong tourist destination and at that point we definitely are going to need more lodging. Maybe it's okay to have the, the buggy in front of the horse at this point, I'm not sure. I think that would be a good marketing tool that if there is some sort of advertising to go up that there is another motel under construction. Would might help the process along. Well, I think at the very least, Tark, if we're going to move forward, you can share Neil's concerns with them. And if they come back and give you the thought of either we can work with this and here's how, or no, wait, that we can make that decision at that time. I talked to them already about it because I mentioned that uh, the Highway 23 construction, how that could have, you know, skewed some of the results. And they said that shouldn't be a concern because they actually look at the wider area and not just specifically the town here. So, uh, and they do a, uh, average results over five years. So they don't really look at what happened last year versus what's going to happen this year. I think this has been kicked around and talked about. I'd rather just get started on it myself, but I agree with your concerns. But I think as long as they're aware of them, we can move forward with it. Any other discussion? Calling the question, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. All right. Payment estimate on the irrigation project. Chuck or Ron? Yeah, the uh, contractor for the irrigation system project is moving forward. They've been the beneficiary of some very nice weather over the winter, so they've made some good progress. So all three pivots have been worked on and have been delivered. So. Um, Project's moving right along. In your packet is a copy of pay request number one for that project in the amount of $337,202.50. All right, so we're looking for a motion to approve paying our invoice in the amount of $337,202.50. I'll make the motion to approve payment estimate number one, the amount of $337,202.50, payable to Hydro Engineering Incorporated. Motion by Herzberg is stated on the action sheet. Is there a second? Second. Second by Soini. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Aye. All right. Moving on. Ordinance number 53rd series, limiting the property negotiations board. Something we talked about when we did our committee assignments, taking this instead of having a separate committee, pulling it to the council, knowing that Tarek, as city administrator, can pull people in for negotiations as he needs to. This has been posted, so we're looking at making it official. The motion would be in order if someone so desires. Now make the motion to approve ordinance number 50, third series. Motion by Theo, is there a second? Second. Second by Herzberg, any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, none. Okay. Right. Now, on to the discussion of the Crows Hills Woodland Park, page 107. We have a number of people here to talk to us about it. You guys can feel free to take the podium. Just ask that uh, if we might not know how to spell your name, make sure you're at least signed in so that we can get it in the minutes, right? But, uh, thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Linda Lisman, 29873, Business 23 West, Painesville. And Steve is going to give each person a handout. I brought exactly 10. So everybody gets one. Thank you. Linda, I just want to make sure we did have something in our agenda packet. Do you know if this is a copy of that? It is updated. It's updated. Okay. Yes, it so is I'll updated. make sure that yes. it gets put with our stuff. So it's So I'm having a little trouble with my voice tonight. I don't have a long speech, but I hope I get through it okay without coughing. I want to tell you about an exciting opportunity our community has to participate in establishing a new recreation and nature park. The proposed park would be one mile south of Painesville. I, 
park would be open to the public, but owned by the county and operated by Stearns County Parks Department. I own this 202 acre woodland. My vision for the property didn't just happen. In 1985, I began purchasing contiguous parcels of old growth forest on the south facing slope of Lake Coronas. The acquisitions were planned with a vision that the property could someday become a public park. I paid for two studies, one biological survey and two forest stewardship plans to understand the unique ecosystem. It would have very, been very challenging for any government to piece the property together as I have. Enhancements such as access points, service roads, eight miles of trails, wetland restoration were all planned for easy conversion to a public park. In 1996, I placed a perpetual conservation easement on the property with Minnesota Land Trust that permanently removed residential and commercial development rights, but which allows for public park use. With a stream running through it, that by the way, drains 7,000 acres of land on the northwest side of Lake Coronas, but which also allows for park use, um, Oh, sorry. With the stream running through it, enhanced woodland, wetlands, and its forest and grassland vegetation, it is too valuable to be developed for residential or commercial use. MnDOT determined it was too environmentally important to destroy for the bypass. I began working on a proposal to Stearns County two years ago. The timing is now as ideal as it can be for the land to be considered for purchase and conversion. Things have recently moved very quickly. Next week, on Tuesday morning, February 20th, the county commissioners are expected to consider and hopefully commit to purchasing the property for the intended use. I have provided each of you with a description of the project with maps, photos, and attachments so you may study it in more detail as to what is being proposed. But also, under this packet, there is a letter that will be sent to our county commissioners on February 15th of this week. This letter is intended to show them that Painesville wants this park to become a reality. This letter is, the, please locate that letter under the packet and review the organizations, entities, and individuals who have, in just three weeks, endorsed the vision. The Coronas Hills Woodland Park Leadership Team has been formed by five community leaders whose names are also at the bottom of that letter. This group has moved quickly to acquire strong support from key organizations and entities. We feel it is very important for our city council to officially express its support. The same goes for Painesville Township, of course, and we will be meeting with them tomorrow night. Tonight we are here to ask Painesville City Council to endorse this project so that the city of Painesville may also appear on this important letter to the Stearns County Commissioners. I thank you for your consideration. Linda, before you step down, does anybody have any questions? <coughs> All right, thank you. I just don't want you to have to make the trip twice, that's all. Steve. Good evening, everyone. Steve Peterson, address is 16027 Lake Cronus Road, Ainsville. So first of all, I want to thank Linda. <laughs> we wouldn't be here talking about this had she not had this foresight and planning for really decades with this incredible piece of property. I, I've told her that in the last year since I got my new dog, Zoe, I walk it almost every morning, at least the assembly grounds piece, including this morning. It, it is a spectacular piece of property that we have here. Um, I uh, just want to make that this leadership team that we've thrown together has been very effective. I want to give a shout out to Randy Schaefer. Uh, Randy, you know, is a very organized guy. We've helped, he's helped us with a library project and all. and. He's been a real wonderful organizer, spearheading sort of this effort in a very short period of time to, to bring a very coherent sort of a, um, plan that's been presented to the commissioners. And, and Jeff, obviously, is a commissioner, has been behind him, but he uh, uh, feels a conflict of interest, so needs other citizens to help carry the load. Um, we testified uh, a week or so ago at uh, the commissioner's meeting, 
and I shared uh, six um, I see benefits of this park, or I call them synergies, and I wanted to share them with you today. First of all, it's such an ideal location, as, as you all know. It's within a mile of the hospital, of restaurants, of the school, of the Highway 23 bypass, of the golf course. Um, you can almost have a better you know, park position. And you look at the other ones in the county, it, it's almost second to none. The school is important. They're very excited. Uh, we just received a letter from Superintendent <coughs> Muller today. They're already thinking about biology classes and nature classes that could have, you know, could actually walk there <laughs> and, and, and appreciate this beautiful uh, piece of uh, God-given property that we have. Even talking about the cross-country team, you know, doing their runs out through the trails. So a lot of synergies for our school. Uh, the adjacent properties, uh, both to the east and the west, are we have really strong cooperation. Our, uh, our all of our buddy, you know, Leo Ludus is to the would be to the east, and and Leo has uh, I think a hundred or so acres there, uh, eighty-five acres, Linda, and you know he's cleared it. It's been as you know, it's been his project to clear the buckthorn here the last few few years. And Neil, you've been out there. He showed you around, but he's. He's all for this. On the other side is, is Cronus Ministries, and we have strong support from Dan there and from their leadership to really have interconnectivity in this park uh, between you know, 100 acres on one side and 100 acres or so on the other side too, so it really is special. Um, <clears throat> the, the fourth thing I'd say is, is the Tri-County Park across the lake. And thanks to a lot of work with the Lake Cronus Regional Bike Trail that, that Jeff and others did many years ago, um, it's, a, it, it's, it's all becoming connected. So there'll be a connection point at the Lake Cronus side where bikers could actually go from there to the, to the Tri-County Park that's actually managed by Meeker County, as, as you probably know. And uh, there they have RV camping, where this site's going to be more, a little bit more natural, more just tenting. So it's very complementary in that way. But the fifth thing is really, and, and uh, Jeff and Chuck and, and uh, Ron, we've been working on this Glacial Lakes Trail. We're getting this close to getting this puppy done here. And you know, if you really think it, and and Councilman Hertzberg mentioned this, I do share with your view that regional tourism is gonna be a big deal. And, and some of you know I'm a biker. I haven't given in yet, or I think I will this year to get an e-bike to make it a little bit easier to go a little further. But that's gonna revolutionize sort of this bike <coughs> anymore. And I'm in quasi good shape. I do a 15, 20 mile ride, but. An e-bike, I could go 60, <laughs> the same energy that I did. So uh, I think that as you look at the, the MnDOT and, uh, um, and, 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 uh, and uh, Department you know, of, of Natural Resources, and you look at the trail maps across the state, they're all eventually going to be connected. And, and so to have this county park um, that will be connected to that Glacial Lakes Trail with our uh, Lake Cronus Trail will just make it very, very special as well. So I said that this is really, I think, a, an investment in a park. Uh, Stearns County Commissioners have looked on a strategic plan. Uh, they want to add 500 acres of parkland uh, over the next number of years, and particularly in areas of the county where we don't have parks, and that's us, you know, in Western and Southwestern, so it fits that strategic plan as well. But I think, as I said, it's an investment that kind of rises the tide for so many different things, not just for us here in Painesville. It augments the tourist experience and really the whole regional, county, and even statewide experience of tourism, which is uh, as a way to share our, this beautiful place that we call home. So those are my comments. Thank you. Any questions for Steve before he sits down? All right. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple things, and I'm 
my opinion is in the letter contained at the end, so I, I won't regurgitate it, but um, I'm curious, and Mr. Bertram, I'm glad you're here because I think you'll know the answer. Is this on the county's capital improvement plan already? And if not, or even if so, what is the best way for us as a council to voice our support for this moving forward? <clears throat> Mayor Ricky and Councilor Jeff Bertram, uh, 662 Spruce Street, Painesville. Um, it's, it's not on a, we don't have a strategic plan per se. What, what, what the county does is uh, they did a comprehensive plan in the park study. In that study, as Steve alluded to, uh, they've identified 400 plus close to 500 acres of parkland that we need to uh, acquire to meet the goals of the population of Stearns County. The comprehensive plan also indicated, as Steve said, that those parklands should be in, uh, in the western part of the county, north, or, north and southern part of, of the county. And so it isn't, a, uh, it isn't a specific strategic plan, but it's basically a comprehensive plan of where the parkland should be. Um, the, um, the county, what the county's done is uh, first, uh, which was not done last year, uh, Linda and I attended several of the park commission meetings they unanimously recommended uh, the park project, which is huge. Uh, we did not expect it to be unanimous, uh, and that was a strong endorsement of this opportunity. The second thing, then the board authorized an appraisal to be done, and we paid for that appraisal. That appraisal wasn't supposed to be done quite yet. It is done as of today. No one has seen it yet. Uh, I hope to see it tomorrow. We certainly will see it for the board meeting on Tuesday. What the commissioners are going to have to decide on Tuesday is, okay, here's the appraisal, here's the offer. Um, do we authorize Ben Anderson, the parks director, to go forward and to apply for grants for the purchase of the property? And then, of course, uh, would we potentially be open to funding the difference of that? Um, that's going to be the decision. Uh, I'm, I'm confident that there's a majority of the board that uh, will support this. Um, what we brought into the table is one this group of seven members uh, the five community members and linda myself um i've committed to raising minimally one hundred fifty thousand dollars towards the project which has never been done before and there's people that are already committed to uh to uh, um, helping meet that goal and also what i was not expecting what we weren't expecting is there's people committed to helping maintain and develop the park after it's purchased which has never been done in the county park system. They've never raised 150,000 private dollars. They've never had uh, funds already committed to help doing the development of it. So to answer your question is on the 20th, uh, the most of the committee hopefully will be there. If council members can be there in the audience, no one will be able to speak. The, the county operates a little different than what I prefer, but uh, it's not gonna be an open forum they did address the public comment part of the last meeting, so they did get their comments in, but basically it's gonna be a discussion between the parks director and the county board. But if the presence of members in the audience uh, are there, that would be a call. And then between now and then, email, call, uh, share your opinions with uh, the council. And this is <clears throat> way beyond, in my opinion, just Painesville. Uh, this is great for Painesville but it's way beyond. It's 30 miles from Bruton, 30 miles from Melrose, 30 miles from Kimball, 30 miles from St. Cloud. It's totally unique. It's a bird watching, it's a press team, a, a US Fish and Wildlife has two developments inside. There's no land like this, in my opinion, in Stearns County. Uh, and to have that here and not to support it would be a, a huge uh, misstep, in my opinion. But uh, communicating with those uh, and then getting people, this has been, like Linda said, uh, this has been somewhat quiet until the last three weeks, you know, a month. Uh, we, it, we didn't want to get too far ahead of ourselves before we had some support to do what we're doing now. So appreciate your consideration and, uh, you know, any support. And at some point, this, the first things first, first we've got to get the board to say, yes, let's pursue the grants. That's when we're going to start kicking in. Uh, raising some of the funds and showing uh, some of the cooperative um, uh, efforts of the township, the city, others, in helping maybe uh, maintain it uh, or do some of those things, and we'll get to that at the right time. So, appreciate the question. Hopefully, I answered it. So, 
letters, emails, things like that. We can be there public forum period before your meeting starts. This is going to be the only opportunity to express that vocally though to the commission, correct? Actually, Naranki, uh, another odd part of the board is you can't speak on an item that's on the agenda at the public forum. <laughs> Never mind that. Which again, I've only been there a year, but some of these things are gonna change because it's odd to me, but that's the way protocol has been. But, uh, but you can't talk in the public forum uh, part of it. That's why they did it the last meeting uh, that we could bring that up. But just being there, and of course, I will recognize uh, that we've got a contingency from Painesville uh, in the audience and you know, numbers speak as we all know. Sean, yeah. public hearing. Yep. Are we okay if we started a little late? Well, you should, help. You should ask, not me. Okay. <laughs> Someone's here for the public hearing. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. So we have a public hearing at 6.30. Mr. Schwant, I see that you're here. Are you okay if we just finish this in a couple minutes and then start it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, thank you, Commissioner Bertram. Any questions for Commissioner? Okay. What time is the meeting on Tuesday? Nine. Okay. I assume it's at nine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thoughts on the council with this? Again, I've already expressed my position as mayor because I wanted to get something in um, beforehand in talking to Linda. We knew that there was going to be some discussion, and Dr. Williams at the county and I played a little bit of phone tag, and that's all right. It happens. So we got that in. But... Uh, What's the position of the council on the rest of this? I think it's exciting. It's, it's just an awesome thing to be having in front here. I've heard the presentation once already, so I'm in support. Okay. Paul, any opposition? Yeah, I'm all for it. The only concern that I have is that uh, it's pretty obvious that, that it's a hotbed for deer. Hmm. So it's going to be more of an issue with the DNR and the deer hunting on that area, but I'm all for it for the city, from my standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the best thing since milk, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well then yeah. at that point, I agree. Oh, the, the issue of hunting has come up, um, and all the parks have hunting around it. Yeah. Um, I have not allowed anybody to hunt on my property except some right. acres who come in a little bit. It was a deal I made with them when I bought the 67 acres on the west side. Um, so they have the right to use it until one of us dies <laughs> or until it's sold. So that we can. There is um, one party that hunts in that area. Um, we've had discussions about it. There is a law in the state of Minnesota you cannot shoot into or over a park, right. park plan, and so that is something that is already addressed, and um, and I I envision that um, during slug season, that's what the county, the uh, parks commission, or excuse me, parks director has said is the biggest concern is slug season, and so there is a possibility closing some trails at that time and telling people to wear orange and to you know be careful. Are you going to separate the four lots that are inside this park, basically? The four so, lots. Yeah. Well, so my parcel is going to be basically inside it. And then you got Christensen, where their back end is going to be inside of it. And then you got another parcel on the other side that's basically right inside of it. The uh, property will be marked. It will be? Oh, yeah. Just oh, make sure. Yes. Yeah, I don't like my one side of the property. That's all marked. And then once you get back to the other side, like it's not really marked on my other two sides. Well, it will be when it becomes a park. Okay. Part of the expense is going to be sign signage, okay. and uh, there's some areas where there'll have to be some gates that will say do not enter private property. Okay, because that was one reason why I bought the property, because there was the no building, and then it was all quite open, you know, like, I wasn't going to be by anybody, basically. So, I'm going to interject here just, I. It's an important conversation to have, but unfortunately, these are things that the council can't decide. We can just support it. Um, but I invite the two of you to talk after the meeting. We just have to move on to our public hearing here. Um, I would entertain, by this point, a motion to support the Woodland Parks letter. And uh, I guess I will probably, I will try to attend. I've got some things Tuesday morning, but I'll try to be there. So I'd entertain that motion. And then if someone wants to tell me if they want to come with. I'll make that motion. Motion by Soini to support the letter. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by everyone. All those, I'll give it to Neil though. 
All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None? Carries. Thank you. All right. Then, with that, we're going to move on to our public hearing. So we will recess our business meeting, open the public hearing, which is on the nuisance property public hearing at 899 Flanders Drive. We have Mrs. Johanna Schwant here in the gallery with us. I will turn it over to Tarek and Chief Wagner to talk to, a little, to talk to us a little bit about what's going on and what we have here. And Bill Spooner as well. And Bill. Um, okay, well, um, I mean, I can let Bill run through the mechanics of what, what has happened since then, but uh, I guess uh, this morning the Chief and I went out, went out there to verify that the vehicles and the tires are still there, and uh, they are still there. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what other questions you have for me, guys. Well, can you tell us, just so that we have it for the record, there are some pictures here that uh, we'll pass down, we'll mark as exhibit number one. We'll get Mrs. Schwant a copy of that. Uh, if somebody could... Uh, thanks, Chief. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, in, in but let me know, I mean, just let me have a clear record. What's, we've already taken action on this property once. What's different? Why are we back again? Um, when we went there the first time to remove, there are two vehicles that were removed, and actually I think uh, um, your husband had them towed to a relative's house. Um, and then there are two other vehicles as well that are the same, in the same situation that are not operable. Uh, one of them is registered, one of them is not. And uh, I mean, if you look at the, the picture here, this is from the January where we, we didn't have, we were supposed to have a public hearing, but we didn't because we, it wasn't posted properly. Uh, and then today, of course, you can see the, the same two vehicles are there. Uh, and then of course, the tires uh, are And uh, yeah, I mean, I did contact Jihana today, and I, I, I asked her. I said, if he can move the vehicles, then you know, I think we can put this matter to rest. But I didn't hear back from her today. Um, just to clarify a little bit, I'll, I'll just kind of run through with the chief a little bit. But you you went out there on December 11th to remove the other two vehicles, and, and at that time. I think it's correct that you learned that these two vehicles wouldn't start, couldn't be moved. Is that correct? Yes. And and then these photographs were taken of those vehicles on January 8th. They remained. They hadn't been moved. And then we took pictures today on February 12th. And they're still there, correct? Correct. And um, the the vehicles, the two vehicles that are there. Um, or inoperable. Which one's not licensed? Do you know? Uh, the white one expired last month. So. Oh, okay. And for the record, I mailed notice of the hearing to the mortgage holder, Freedom Mortgage Corporation, on January 10th, and I sent the notice down to the chief to be served on, on uh, Johanna, and he did that, and I have an affidavit of service showing it was served on January 11th. Um, asking that those two vehicles and the tires be removed. I think there's four tires. It's a little bit hard to tell from the picture, but it appears to me that there's four tires back there. Um, and that's so that, those were the those were the three things basically that were listed that needed to be corrected: the um, the two vehicles and the uh, the tires. So the white sport track expired last month. The S10 is still valid? Through this month. Through this month, okay. Do they run? Do we know if they run? Neither. We, yeah, we went today to try and find out if they ran and were operable. Um, not sure what the circumstances were, but we weren't able to, um, I don't know if Jennifer said her husband wasn't home. To be able to do that, she'd get a hold of Tark. We didn't hear anything back that the vehicle actually, you know, that they could actually move the vehicles. Uh, the black uh, S10 has two flat tires in the back. Um, that one had to be towed out of the way when we uh, went to remove the other two vehicles and wouldn't start, so. The white one too would have started. But that was in December. That was in What's that? That was in December. Yeah. yeah. All right, anything else from any of these? Always, I'll ask Mrs. Schwab to 
give us some information. I'll sort of give her the floor. I think the only other thing I would add with what Bill said, I think there's more than four tires there. Um, the trailer is covering quite a few other car parts, I believe. You can see a lot more. Um, and that's when we noticed it was when we were moving the other vehicles. So it's kind of a collection of everything that's back behind there, a bunch of tires and um, other miscellaneous like car parts, it looks like, rims and stuff like that. Thank you. Mr. Schwantz, do you want to tell us a little bit about or address what Tarek and the chief have raised here? Yeah, well, with the registration, I did not realize they expired last month, so I'll need to take care of that because um, I thought all the vehicles were now registered since all of this began. Um, but other than that, my husband is still not home, marital bliss, so we'll figure out communication. Um, and I don't know where the keys are. I only maintain my, my vehicle. So uh, we were not able to move the vehicles, and I will take care of the registration. But other than that, I, I can't speak to beyond. He was repairing vehicles because he knew they had to be moved. Um, but we also thought they were registered or did not realize the expiration passed as quickly as it did or caught up and then passed, I should say. And as far as tires, I had a Pinterest project for garden beds, but the rest of the stuff is his. Um, the last time we talked about those other vehicles, the council made a finding of the nuisance and gave some time to cure uh, while we pursued the administrative warrant and things like that. And I know you said your husband's not home, but if the same finding were made tonight, how much time do you think it might take to clear that out before we would have to come and tow? Honestly, I, I can't make an assessment. I would hope it would be done. You know, it's, it's a Minnesota summer, right? So I would hope that he's able to get it done. I just... If you ask me about Microsoft, I can tell you all kinds of things, but if you ask me about cars, I can't make any type of assessment. One of the things that I mean, our city ordinance talks about is that we've declared it to be a public nuisance for there to be any accumulation of unlicensed, unregistered, or inoperable motor vehicles, or similarly an accumulation of inoperable machinery, mechanical equipment, um, a number of other things which uh, I take it into consideration my view is that it would include tires and the like is there anything you want to talk to us about that as far as why this maybe should not be considered a public nuisance I'm, I'm sorry what was your question other than let me see if I my property sh shouldn't be I'm sorry yeah let me see if I can phrase it without wearing my lawyer hat <laughs> I'm sorry so our, our ordinance says that any accumulation of unlicensed or inoperable vehicles can be considered a public nuisance. And I just want to make sure that we're hearing from you on, well, first of all, I mean, do you think that those vehicles are a nuisance? And if not, why not? I, I don't think they're a nuisance because they're on the property that for all intents and purposes, I pay the mortgage rate, so I own my property. It's the vehicles are owned by us. They're not laid out in the backyard everywhere. Um, he likes to fix things up. It's his hobby, and so while he's a little bit slower to do so, it's you know in process. And while he's not here to communicate, I'm here because he's not home. So we're working through some of those details where he could have, if he was here, provide more information for you. Of the neighbors who I've spoken with, people are saying they haven't said anything because they, of course, saw the last time that things happened. And so they approached me to share that, you know, they're three of the neighbors, I should say. I haven't spoken with every single neighbor, but three of the houses surrounding our area. And so I would hope that if it was more of a concern, if it's not causing safety and it's not causing harm, then he would be able to have his vehicles, which as far as registration, I'll take care of that tomorrow. I truly just didn't realize that it was that time already. Um, so I'll. Now, my personal take is that the vehicles are one issue, but then the trailer with the tires and stuff in the back is separate. Do you think that the stuff in the back is a nuisance? And again, if, so, if not, why not? 
So I don't think they're a nuisance because they're neatly put away for him without us having a shed and another storage option right now. With that being said, it's something we're looking into. Of course, we're not putting anything up at this moment, um, but I can work with him to get, I can encourage him strongly to get things moved into our garage. Um, in terms of some of the tires, like I said, I was hoping to use some for garden beds and little projects like that, but if that's not something that's allowed, which I didn't realize, I can figure out recycling and whatnot. Thank you, Mrs. Schwant. Can council have anything else they'd like to ask Mrs. Schwant or Mrs. Trace? Bill, if you could refresh my recollection, do you want the council to make its findings in the public hearing or should we adjourn or close the public hearing and go back into our business meeting for that part? Yeah, I mean, that's not really part of the public hearing. Once you've heard the testimony, then we can talk about the findings. Okay. Um, Mr. Schwartz, I'll get anything else you want us to know before I close it? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Anybody else here at the public hearing? All right. We'll close that, and the council can discuss. I'll, I'll repeat what I said to Mr. Schwant, which is that I think the vehicles and the trailer and tires are two separate things. Uh, if the vehicles are licensed, and it sounds like the one is not, but only just. Are we really that concerned? There's, an, I mean, there are other houses in town. I can think of one that has a number of vehicles that are all properly licensed and the person works on them at least from time to time and we found that to be acceptable i think it kind of states in our ordinance that they need to be licensed and insured and yeah it's up to them then to well the ordinance says operational yeah. and they're clearly not operational so <clears throat> you law at once you're going to have a hundred Dragways full of inoperable cars. They do now. So if we're going to allow it, we might as well put an X through the ordinance. It's either what it is or it's not. So I guess I'm in favor of enforcing or the ordinance. Paul. I think we have to follow the ordinance. Okay. Unless we're going to change the ordinance, yeah. I mean, we just redid the ordinance not long ago, and I believe Mr. Spooner said that if we're going to allow variances, why are we even having ordinances to start with? Well, I'd say let's go with the ordinance. Well, then you're going to have every driveway full of inoperable cars. Why not? Right. Is that what we want? No. Okay. And yes, there, uh, I personally had a neighbor talk to me. Uh, that was back when the other cars were there. So I don't know if they're happy now or not, but when the others were there, I did have a complaint from a neighbor. Well, we've had to go through this with other properties in town too, so. We have, and so the, the procedure we went through last time was a motion authorizing and or directing the city attorney, city administrator, and police chief to apply for and obtain an administrative warrant authorizing them to enter onto the property and, and remove the vehicles, which was done. Uh, and I think we'd be looking for a motion similarly to that tonight if the council makes the appropriate findings. Um, and we'd be looking at findings that there is an accumulation of unlicensed, unregistered, or inoperable motor vehicles, and that uh, there's an accumulation of inoperable machinery, equipment, uh, rubbish, things of that matter that should be accumulated and, and have been accumulated and should be removed. 
So do we need to set a date of when they should be removed? Last time we did that, and Bill, please correct me if I put my foot in my mouth here. Uh, we did that because we thought there was a, an intent to cure. Um, that went on a couple of times, and we had to just get the warrant. I think my preference would be if the council finds that there's a violation, we just move forward with immediate clearing at this point. Yeah. That would be, I mean, I don't know, Bill, unless we have to give a certain amount of time to fix, but. I mean, I think we'd, we'd end up giving a little bit of time because we'd probably draft findings, present them at the next council meeting, and then send a copy to the property owner. So, I mean, I think just by the process, she'd have a little bit of time, but we don't have to delay getting a warrant once once we've made the findings. I think we can proceed to send the notice to her and apply to the court for, for a warrant. And um, if they remove the stuff, great. And if they don't, then we'll have the warrant and we'll proceed. So that'll be at least two weeks then? Yeah. yeah. Remove or get them running. <laughs> well, I will say, uh, my take on these vehicles, one is licensed, but it has flat tires. That doesn't mean it doesn't run. Uh, although it, they've been flat and it hasn't moved for a while. So I can make some pretty safe, I think, assumptions. But the other one looks operable to, from the picture and the license is expired for all of the month. Personally, I'm not in favor of finding a nuisance on the vehicles. I understand some might feel differently and I respect that, but that's my opinion. On the tires and the trailer of stuff like that, that's different. I think that's pretty much an accumulation of rubbish and things of that nature. But I think what I'm hearing from the council is a consensus to authorize the city attorney to work with the city administrator on drafting findings that there's been an accumulation of materials in violation of the ordinance to present for us for approval at the next council meeting. So moved. Yeah. Given, given the age of these vehicles and their condition, are you comfortable finding that, uh, that again, that like you did last time, that the value would be fairly nominal in the nature of a couple hundred dollars a vehicle? I haven't heard any evidence to the contrary, so that's what I would consider their value. So at this point, I have a motion by Hertzberg to direct the city attorney and city administrator to draft up the appropriate findings for the council to consider at our next meeting regarding the nominal value of the property and the existence of a nuisance. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Thielen. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. We'll bring that back with the written order for our next hearing. <coughs> Moving on then, new business B, the hiring of a part-time liquor store clerk, page 127 of our agenda. Tarek, back to you. Uh, yeah, um, Bill and I interviewed uh, Ms. Jackson and uh, yeah, we, we uh, recommend hiring her. Okay. Motion, so we're looking to Hire Ms. Tasha Jackson, grade one, step two. Step two, yes. Uh, just so that we have something in the record, is there justification for the step two? Yeah, she has previous liquor store experience. Okay. Good enough for me. I'll make the motion to hire Tasha Jackson as a part time liquor store clerk up to nine <coughs> hours a week. Grade one, step two, 16, 16 per hour. Effective immediately. Motion by Sweeney. Is there a second? Second. Second by Hertzberg. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. <laughs> right. Then we have a number of proposed election judges. I'm not going to bother listing them, but is there a motion to appoint the election judges as presented on the sheet for Super Tuesday? Motion to approve. Motion by Hertzberg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Sweeney. Any further discussion? Thank you to all the election judges for continuing America's monarchy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Given our choice of candidates this year, I'm not keen on the well, shut up. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? None. The motion carries. Can I be equally displeased with both sides? Sure. Cool. I, I well, maybe not equally, but. All right. That's it for our business. We do have a number of informational things. The January Police Department reports Centerpoint has a proposed rate increase 
and pay attention there. They're going to jack up our rates until they get approval, so they're just going to do it and then ask for forgiveness later. Uh, as Ron talked about, referring to the trail expansion as phase nine instead of phase one. And finally, on our update, we have a corrected notice from Stern County on the highway. With that, we have a number of, or a couple of things here. Proposed closed session to discuss the property at 317 Highway 55, parcel number 70.39363.0025. Our motion to go into closed session to discuss that pursuant to section 13D.03 of the open meeting law. Sure. Motion by Soini to go into closed session pursuant to 13D03. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. We will go into closed session, discuss that. We'll come out and then we will go back into another closed session for the other property. Good seeing you again, Will. You will too. Okay. Should I check with her? Yeah. Oh, she just, oh, she just read my message. We're good. All right. Can somebody, do you guys want to pass me your closed stuff for the last one? Pass it to Tarek. Yep. Those got to go too. I don't know. Oh well, I'll keep mine. Kristen says we're back on the public record, so we are back on. Council met to discuss the property at 70 or 317 Highway 55, parcel number 70393630025. Discussed the uh, conversations that have been happening with somebody potentially interested in buying it. Um, indicated that I've been in talks with that person and the council's reached a consensus authorizing me, the city administrator and the city attorney to uh, express a, I guess, counter offer would probably be the, the closest term, although no official offer has been made. So with that, there's also a, uh, another real property issue. It's, uh, property ID is 70.38641.0040, a portion of that. We have an actual offer there and uh, looking to go, looking for a motion to go into closed session pursuant to 13D05 sub 3 of the open meeting law. So moved. Motion by Herzberg. Is there a second? Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Kristen, that was motion was, or that motion was by Herzberg, seconded by Gene. Okay. Kristen says we're ready to go. So we're back. We can finished our closed session on property 70.38641.0040. We've instructed our city administrator and our city attorney to clear up some things in the paperwork, and that will come back before us at a later date. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.